So Ascendance of a Bookworm, we're here to talk about the past couple of episodes. Now, as you can probably hear, unless it's only in my head, which I highly doubt, my voice is a little shot. I'm coming off of tonsillitis. I more or less beat it, but I still have like a bacterial infection going on in my throat. Doesn't hurt in the slightest to talk anymore, so that's a pretty good blessing. So I'm not pushing myself or anything if anyone is worried, but that's why the voice is a little scratchy and rough, so we're just going to have to deal with it for the time being. But I have to say, the past couple of episodes of Bookworm were surprisingly Season 1-esque. Last week, more so than the newest episode, I mean, the previous episode, whichever number that is, you can look up the title, I'm not going to remember all these episodes, especially when I do it in joint it's impossible for me to remember. I'm just short-brained anymore. It kind of seems like it is. But that was like the most season one era episode that season two has had. It was literally just crafting and creating the montages of basically taking modern ideas, but in a very ancient civilization. It was great to see that, especially just considering you look back at season one and you're like just trying to make a clay tablet and having it break time and time again. And now we're sewing books together. It's insane to see what two years in this anime looks like because it doesn't feel like things just magically happen, but naturally it takes a long time and a lot of struggle despite this main character, mine, having this amazing ability to just create these modern ideas and it feels like, oh, how is like this eight-year-old looking girl coming up with this? How did she really read enough books to make it, but she still struggles to get there? And then with this latest episode, it just seems like it almost feels like knowing too much is actually going to bite her majorly in the ass, especially considering now that we know come winter she's going to have to actually live there because her mana is needed to basically recharge everything. There is a lot of possibilities for some craziness to occur, and besides Ferdinand, this church is not looking good, especially considering, like, look at what they did to the library just so she would stay away from a festival. It's kind of insane to think about. What I really love about last week's episode is just, I mean, you have the Wilma content, which I think is fantastic, but then you also have all the creation side, and it just feeling very reminiscent to Season 1. For maybe some people who think Season 2 isn't as good as Season 1, is probably going to be one of their favorite episodes of this season. And for those of us who have really enjoyed Season 2, I've actually enjoyed Season 2 much more than Season 1 because ever since we got into the church, it just feels like there's a more structured plotline. You still have the creation, you still have the wonders and the almost slice-of-life moments, but you have something that feels more objective-based, as if, okay, you have all these obstacles, you have these antagonists in form of the church and just their different members, you have the noble society, which we're learning you can't even be a noble unless you pass a curriculum. It's insane there's so many obstacles that hold our main character back and even when you have great guys like Ferdinand he still has to keep an eye on her to make sure that she's not going to expose or do something that's going to cause himself trouble but also herself because he sees that she is a really good person just maybe with a big mouth and maybe too modern of ideas and it'll be interesting to see how much he does know especially with these magic books that apparently no one can really read other than him because they're in his personal chambers and things like that. Last week doesn't have as much I'd say to talk about maybe as this current episode, but it was really nice to see just the idea of the picture books and just what they were doing because I would honestly argue the whole idea of the books and just the idea of like, hey, we're trying to make children's story like, oh, the big bad wolf and the three little pigs and just trying to take just the church's like kind of like gospel and ideas, turn it into literature so you'd be able to teach kids how to read and write but also teach them the ways of the church, which is really interesting. I like how it's such a basic idea if we think about it with our own idea, like, of course, like, carve it, ink it, press it on paper. It's just such a normal idea in modern age, but you rewind and you think how these characters would perceive it. This is literally wizardry and magic to them, and the fact that just a basic, horrible, just depiction of a beautiful drawing can make kids and adults just drop their job being like, oh my god, that actually looks like what she drew, that's amazing. But for characters like mine, it looks like a failure. It's very easy for us to just kind of think like mine as if, wow, this looks horrible, or wow, this is really cool. But then a lot of the things that we think is cool, like the idea that she can read the three little pigs to these characters, for them it's like, that's just such a weird concept. It's like, what, what does this mean? What does this mean? You're like, oh yeah, they didn't really grow up with this, so we kind of have to change it. To make it fit for them but then a failure of a creation can look magical to them because how did you take that drawing and put it over here even if it's not as detailed that's literally cool 
But for us and for mine, it's like, hmm, this doesn't look right. We're gonna have to make it a lot more basic. It's like, wait, why do they like this? It's really cool to have that kind of perspective because it makes us feel very familiar to mine. Not as like wish fulfillment or like she's an insert for the viewer and things like that. No, it's simply like, oh, because we have this modern mindset pretty much identical to this character, it makes it very easy for us to think like her. So when characters like Ferdinand or just the others kind of give us a wake up call being like, oh, this doesn't make sense for this time period because we didn't grow up with this, or Ferdinand's like, hey, you're being way too modern, you're like, that's right, this could very well bite us in the ass, and you could be called a witch, because why do you know so much? Were you from a different country? Because even if the books and basically the reports say you were born here, because, well, obviously, you're literally a young child, clearly there's something going on. The last thing you want is for a noble to get wind that, oh yeah, you kind of came from a magical land, that's kind of burning on the stake, especially in a church, which would probably be able to be considered you're the devil or something like that. I really like that. It was really nice to see all that content. It just felt very reminiscent of season one. And the Wilma content is something I have to give major praise to. And it's kind of goes hand in hand with the retainer plot lines in general. If you look at how fast she's recruited a lot of these characters, that's like three seasons worth of content for a lot of anime. They would take like three to six episodes to convince someone to recruit someone to gain a friendship, but here, it just feels like, okay, our main focus is on mine. Our main focus on is on what she's doing and saying, so sometimes things will happen in the background, and then when we reconnect with this character, they've had their own little adventure, they tell us, or we get wind of it, or something like that, and in doing so, it lets it progress. Wilma's whole, like, not wanting to be around men is a pretty major point to her character. She's terrified of them. There's these emotional high points with that, but the fact that she kind of like sat and did her own thing, she started getting more comfortable, especially because of mine pretty much saying, hey, I want you to try a different drawing style. That's pushing her out of her comfort zone. So the fact that she was able to do that by herself kind of gained confidence in that in return, when mine came back and said, hey, this is really good. We're going to immediately print this. She's like, I want to come with you. It doesn't feel like it randomly happened or it's too fast paced, but it's like, that's naturally how a character in her shoes probably should act. She's been alone and afraid of men for a very long time and now that she has a master who's pushing her out of her comfort zone is respecting her social boundaries she's saying you know what maybe it's time for me to take a couple steps forward and see what i can do especially considering that she's never bringing men around me once she learned about something that actually bothers me it's really nice how they're progressing it actually feels very natural as if we're not looking at characters as their plot devices so we have to see every single second of their story for it to feel like they're having character progression but rather there's a lot of characters in this show and we're going to reconnect with them whether they have good or bad moments and then in return it's going to give mine a new perspective and outlook on what's happening and that's really interesting. And I'd have to say with the latest episode the thing that I'm loving the most and most anticipating with the remainder of this season and a season 3 if we do get it is what's going to happen with the modern ideas because as I mentioned like if people catch wind of this it's going to cause her a lot of issues and Fernand's not an idiot. Fernand is my absolute favorite character in this show. I love how he thinks, I love how he acts, his composure, his posture. It just feels like someone who knows a lot, who seems strict, but also is modern in his own way, but also is very confused at how this girl continues to do such wizardry. A lot of what Mine's doing, she shouldn't be doing until she's like 20. If you're naturally building this up to make it feel like, oh, she's not a witch, she's not someone who's doing some weird magic, she would naturally have to build up to these, but then there's this 8-year-old looking girl who's doing things that should take many, many years, and everyone is taking notice. And that's going to cause her to get either kidnapped by people because, oh, she has these crazy ideas, we want to steal them so we can make a lot of money. She's going to get kidnapped and interrogated by the church because why are you doing this? Are you possessed by the devil? There's a lot of ways things could go wrong, and I'm glad that she is being a little more cautious, like she's making sure to hold on to the crystal when she talks to Ferdinand, she's going into the room, and hell, she's even bowing to Noble she doesn't have to bow to just so she doesn't cause conflict. She definitely is maturing and evolving, but you can tell there's still a long way to go, especially with how mad she was when the library was ripped anew, and then just how happy she got when she realized that she could organize. Just the idea of, like, decimal systems and how she organized, like, there's so many things that she says and does that make so much sense to me, but I'm like, oh god, don't do this because if it's the wrong person, the wrong servant hears this, there's going to be some questions, and luckily the only questions that have been asked so far is from Ferdinand. There's definitely some really big highlights for the voice acting, I'd have to say with mine though, just when she was freaking out about the library, that was so precious, so adorable, and so rage-filled, you could tell this was someone who truly cared about the library being ripped anew, and I loved every ounce of the voice acting, 
And I just love Ferdinand just being so calm, cool, and collected, being like, thank you for bringing her. This was the right move. And just how he interrogates her and never feels like overly forced, but rather someone who knows there's something going on, but keeps his cool no matter the circumstance, even if the only people listening is himself and mine. It's really great to see how they're doing this. It just feels like Bookworm is going in a great direction, and if we get a season 3, I can only begin to imagine how great it's going to look and feel with the idea of the creations, the church plotline, and just Mind's composure and just what she'll get herself into, good and bad. I love the past couple of episodes, especially in a little mini binge format. They just flow so well, and I'm loving the structure of this season a lot. I mean, honestly, the highlight for me is just seeing there's actually consequences for her being so modern, and that could easily be avoided in just saying, oh, you know, they're dumb, they're from the past, they don't recognize what's happening, but you have a church that believes in God. That could be wizardry, the devil, something like that, and there's a lot of people who'd want to pick up on that and question her and interrogate her and it could go a lot of ways so I'm really glad they're kind of pursuing that in terms of a narrative but as always let me know your thoughts and opinions on Bookworm be it the newest episode or last week down in the comment section below and if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave like share your support remember to hit that subscribe button if you have been new around here so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one